All right, I'm here with an updated look at my PS3 collection. It's been a little while since I updated my PS3 collection. And I think when I did my PS3 collection, prices were like spiking. So some of the stuff's come back down. Some of the stuff has kind of settled at a high price. But PS3 collecting is pretty cool, pretty fun. I would say PS3 is probably my late, least favorite PlayStation. But I think it's still a pretty solid system. Um... And a lot of good games, a lot of interesting games, a lot of games I would still like to get. So I'm going to go through, kind of give some thoughts on each one, and kind of maybe suggest some uh, recommendations. And of course, as always in the comments down below, I'm looking for recommendations as well, so feel free to put those. But I'll start out here with uh, 3D Dot Game Heroes. So this is a From Software developed kind of like retro Zelda 1 inspired adventure game. Uh, that Atlas published, and uh, yeah, this one's gone up, this one skyrocketed, I think it's kind of high in price, but I don't think it's too bad, but Anarchy Reigns, this was a platinum game that was like a multiplayer game, I've never played this one, I don't think you can really play do too much with it uh, nowadays, I don't think, if servers are up, I can't imagine they're well populated, but um, interesting concept at least. I'm a big Platinum fan. Uh, that's getting harder and harder to say sometimes, but <laughs> being a big Platinum fan, but you know, they're still great. Got here Batman Arkham Asylum. This is definitely my favorite of the Arkham games. I just like the more, um, I don't know, the more close ended almost Metroidvania type, you know, design to this game. I think it's really strong and... I feel like it kind of got muddied a little bit once it went to open world. I understand why they went to open world, because, like, where to go next. But I feel like the games kind of get worse with, which, with each installment. But this is still an awesome game. And, the, you know, the other games in the series aren't bad. But this is still an awesome game. It's still a classic. Um, I'm sure everyone's played this. But if you haven't, great game. Bioshock and Bioshock 2, kind of uh, two-in-one disc, I don't know. Um, I One of my most shameful games I've never played is the Bioshock, at least Bioshock 1. Um, never played it. I'd like to at some point. I've got to get to that, um, but never played it. I know it's great. I know it's considered one of the all-time best. So some point, it's definitely on the backlog. At some point, I will do it. Beyond Two Souls, I, this is still sealed. I got this from... Uh, Target. It, I still have a clearance sticker for $4. This is a David Cage game um, where there's celebrities in it and he pretty much was just a huge embarrassment again. So, I don't know. Um, it was kind of a creep. I don't know. Alright, let's see what's up next. Britney's Dance Beat. This is a PlayStation 2 game. This is also a French copy of the game and I, I don't speak French so I'm not sure what I can really do with this. This video is sponsored by Babbel. Do you think I know enough French to play Britney's Dance Beat for the PlayStation 2? The answer is that I probably don't, but I could with Babbel. Babbel is a language learning app that teaches you to speak, read, and listen in new languages. It provides tools for real-world conversations, including lessons, games, podcasts, videos, and other live online classes with expert teachers. Whether you want to become fluent or learn a few phrases for your next vacation, Babbel has you covered. Babbel could help you plan a trip and vacation like a pro, explore new cultures, or even advance your career. Imagine how good a second language could look on your resume. I was recently out of the country earlier this year, and there's a language barrier, as some of you may know. Imagine being able to help eliminate that with the skills that you learn from Babbel. Lessons are designed by real language teachers. Babbel offers a 20-day money-back guarantee. Babbel offers live classes. Get two free classes with your subscription. Babbel teaches real-world conversations. Lessons prepare you to have practical conversations about travel, business, relationships, and more. Babbel has a few different subscriptions to choose from, including a lifetime subscription. If any of this sounds interesting to you, just click the link below to get Babbel. When you use my link, you can get up to 60% off. The potential to learn a new language is only a click away. Thanks again to Babbel for sponsoring this video. Brutal Legend. So this is Double Fine. Did this with uh, EA, kind of a heavy metal inspired um, game. Abjo Dad was actually the one interested in this game because uh, he is uh, big into 
classic metal and stuff like that. Uh, Jack Black's in it. Obviously, Tim Schafer game, so big name. I wonder if uh, now that they're owned by Microsoft, they'll ever end up doing anything with Brutal Legend again. But Castlevania Lords of Shadow Collection. So this has both uh, the uh, Lords of Shadow Mirrors of Fate HD and um, the demo for Lords of Shadow, and I would assume the actual game of Lords of Shadow, the demo for Lords of Shadow 2 in the actual game. Um, I'm not familiar with Lords of Shadow. I got this at a garage sale. I'm not familiar with Lords of Shadow too much. I didn't play it. Um, I, but Mirror Fates, the, uh, was that the Xbox Live game or was that the 3DS game? I can't remember. I don't know. I'm going to stop embarrassing myself. I do think it's interesting that Mercury Steam, who developed this, um, also developed the Metroid Dread, Metroid Samus Returns. So they are like the only, you know, they've developed the Metroidvania games. Metroid and Castlevania, they, they did it. They did both series. Catherine, I think Catherine's phenomenal. What a great game. Um, you know, the Persona team in between 4 and 5 made this just interesting little game, uh, puzzle game that's hard as nails, but super fun. All-timer. There's also a great version of the game on PlayStation 4 and Switch, too. Um, but you're not going to go wrong either way. Dead Rising 2, I found this at a pawn shop. It is still sealed. Uh, I found it sealed at a pawn shop for a dollar. Never really given Dead Rising a chance. I have Dead Rising 2 off the record as well. Um, I don't know what the difference between these is. I would assume this has more content. I'm not quite sure. Um, but yeah, I'm a big Capcom fan, but I don't know. Dead Rising was like the Crapcom phase where it was like, I don't know. I know people like them, but uh, it's, that's a era of Capcom best left forgotten. Deus Ex Human Revolution. So I gave this one a shot back when I got it. I got it, I think, for like $1.99 at GameStop back in the day. And I couldn't get really into it, but I feel like I just didn't get it at the time. And I feel like if I tried it again, I could probably enjoy it. So we'll have to see. DMC Devil May Cry. So this, of course, was the um, Ninja Theory. I want to say I wanted to say Team, Team Ninja, but that's not right. Ninja Theory developed kind of trying to be a reboot of the classic, you know, Capcom series. Um, I don't know. It just I don't know. <laughs> Come on, guys. Devil May Cry Five was great. Just play that. Dragon's Dogma. I just got this one recently. Haven't tried it out. I promise I play played a lot of these PS3 games, but just some of these I've not yet. Um, but I got this at a garage sale recently. I've heard great things about Dragon's Dogma. They're making a sequel, so I'd like to at least check it out before the sequel. See if it's something I might be interested in. Drakengard 3. I got this one recently as well. Um, sealed from Video Games Plus. I don't know if they how they got a reprint of this or something. But um, one of the few PS3 games with a blue spine. Um, but Drakengard 3. Uh, I have the other two Dragon Guards. I know it's all part of this weird Yoko Taro cinematic universe. I don't know. Um, but just good to have it around. It was getting hard to find there. Eternal Sonata. So every time I do a PS3 video, every time anything, I say, oh, I, this one's on the backlog. i got to check it out. I've heard great things. Um, I've heard this was kind of a bright point in a very dark era for JRPGs where stuff wasn't so hot back then. But just have not tried it yet. Guys, if you see my JRPG backlog, you're just going to weep. This is another recent edition, Fallout New Vegas. Um, I've heard great things about Fallout New Vegas. I don't know. Uh, I tried Fallout 4 is the only Fallout game I've put any time into, and I wasn't crazy about it, but I now I know there's some like revisionist history that people aren't too into that game now, so maybe I'm better off trying another one. Because I thought for a while I wasn't into Western... Um, role-playing games, but then I played uh, Cyberpunk, and I was like, oh, this is awesome, so I don't know. Final Fantasy 13, as well as Final Fantasy 13 II. Um, I, I tried, I really tried with Final Fantasy 13. I couldn't get into it. It's another thing I would really, I want to be able to say I've played every single mainline Final Fantasy, so I'd like to give it another go because then i hear the people oh it really gets great 40 hours in which is like a horrifying thing to tell anybody um and then i've heard final fantasy 13 too is like genuinely very good so i'm like i don't i i'd like to is it high on my list of priorities no is my list of priorities is lightning returns final fantasy 13 high on my list of priorities 
Not really, but I'd like to at some point. But I mean, I have a backlog that's pretty large, and I don't really too much believe in the... Ba it's, I don't have it like written down, but I have it like, I'd like to get to this, I'd like to get to this. Those games are definitely part of it, but... <clears throat> Someday. God of War Saga, this includes... This is a pretty comprehensive... Um, so it would it originally included the PSP games, but I got this used, so I'm going to guess that the code doesn't work. Uh, but it includes God of War 1 and 2, as well as God of War 3. Um, so pretty comprehensive HD kind of collection of those games. And, at the you know, including the PSP games uh, at the time would have also been cool, but I can't really count that for me now. Uh, another David Cage gem, Heavy Rain. I've not played, I mean, I didn't play Beyond. I've not played Heavy Rain. Um, I, I love video, watching videos of the game where he, he, like, they do everything wrong and the main character looks like an idiot. I love those videos. Those are so funny. Um, and I'd like to play the game like that at some point. I don't know. Heavy Rain, Heavy Rain is, I'll, I'll say this, because I make fun of David Cage on the channel from time to time. I don't really care about, about him very much, but he's a funny figure just because he's, I don't know, kind of pretentious for how dumb he, some of the things he does are, and he seems like he's kind of a creep from some of the stuff that's come out about Quantic Dream, so I don't know. But this game is a lot more important than people give it credit for, and, I, and as far as the more narrative-style game, as far as that kind of QTE-style game, um, and this is probably one of PlayStation's more important exclusives, and I don't think it gets that much credit because it is David Cage, but, you know, I'll give him there. I'll give him credit where credit's due. All right, so next up, I got this at Toys R Us clearance, like 2014 or something. Still sealed. I've yet to try it out, but Eco and Shadow Colossus Collection. I've not played either of these games. I know they're pretty, you know, classic PlayStation games, very important for the brand, but just never got around to them. I'm not, I'm not, I don't know if they would be my thing. I'm not entirely sure. Infamous and... Infamous 2 with all this hideous Walmart exclusive, downloadable something, early access to Uncharted multiplayer beta. Pretty hideous cover there. Um, I'm going to assume not all of them are like that. Infamous is another one. So I went through this time where I was trying out a bunch of games and none of them really stuck. And I tried Infamous because, you know, I liked Uncharted. I liked, I, I genuinely, I generally like the PlayStation exclusive series and I tried Infamous and just, I don't know, something about it didn't click, and I, uh, I don't know, I'd like to try it again at some point, you're gonna hear that a lot, but they should, I don't know why they haven't really re-released these, like, I can't believe that they didn't do, like, a, you know, a Nathan Drake style port, uh, Nathan Drake collection style port of those games, just because it's like, I don't know, I mean, that's a pretty important PlayStation franchise, it's just stranded on PS3, but Jack and Dexter collection, uh, HD collection, they did a good job with these HD collections. They put out, you know, Ratchet and Clank and all that stuff. And, uh, yeah. I'm embarrassed. I forget what this was called. Um, so, Chunsoft did, like, these sound novels uh, for Super Famicom back in the day. And to my knowledge, this is, like, the new version. I forget what it's called. Um, but I got this when I was in Japan last month. And, uh... Thought it was kind of cool. I don't know. I'm a, I'm a big uh, Chunsoft, Spike Chunsoft fan, so. Katamari Forever. I believe they, no, they re-released a um, different Katamari game, but uh, this is a PlayStation 3 exclusive Katamari. And uh, Katamari, what a what a concept, you know? What a concept. That music and everything. That's that insanity. Got here, Kingdom Hearts. 1.5 remix, and then I have 2.5, but it's still sealed. I have it now on PS4 um, in that 1.5, 2.5. Kingdom Hearts is one of those series where it's like, yeah, this is a fun game. I'm having fun, and I'm like, man, this story. I wish there was, I wish the story was just not here, and I could just run around these fun worlds and beat little guys up. Because uh, I think the combat's fun. I feel like it's fun to play, but man, but I'm going to be honest. Kingdom Hearts 1, I don't think is a very good game i think it it's uh not great but you know two is pretty fun and i had fun with three uh even though i know people were disappointed with it i had fun with it because i was like i don't care about this story i don't know about this story i i couldn't tell you anything that's going on at this point but yeah got a couple lego games here lord of the rings and marvel superheroes 
Um, I used to be pretty religious about trying to get the Platinums on LEGO games, so I got them on both of these. Uh, I haven't put the time in for a while. Uh, they haven't really been making as many LEGO games. They've spent a lot of time on the new LEGO Skywalker saga, but yeah. I mean, those are both pretty solid LEGO games as far as LEGO games go. Lollipop Chainsaw. This is the Grasshopper game um, that uh, James, Gun James Gunn notably wrote with um, Suda51, which I, is interesting, long before Guardians of the Galaxy and DC and everything. And uh, this is getting, I think, a re-release, but it has nothing to do with Grasshopper or anything. I think, like, Katakawa is doing everything with it, so a little bit wary of that re-release, but iconic ps3 game i would say iconic game for the era one that i got thought looked interesting and have yet to play lost dimension i don't know i just thought this game looked interesting there was some kind of mechanic i believe having to do with like trying to flush out an imposter so it was like among us i don't know who i know atlas published this i don't remember who de developed this but they invented among us before among us when you really think about it I could also be wrong. That's not the plot of the game at all, and I'm just stupid, but I don't know. Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Uh, I really like Marvel vs. Capcom, or Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. I played a ton of that on the Vita, but Marvel vs. Capcom 3, it doesn't quite have that awesome art style as 2. It doesn't have, quite have the ridiculous roster that 2 has, but I still think it's pretty fun. Um, I wish we would get a good new one, not like uh, Infinite. <clears throat> I also have... Ultimate Marvel. I didn't realize I had a console version of Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 is awesome still. It has Phoenix Wright in it, so obviously you know you got me, but I didn't realize I had the console version of that too. So we got some Metal Gear Solid. This is the Metal Gear Solid Legacy Collection. This has a lot of stuff in it. <laughs> this is a really good set, actually. So it has the original Metal Gear. It has Metal Gear 2. It has uh, Solid. Solid 2. Solid 3. And it has some extra stuff as well as Metal Gear Solid 4 in here as well. This is a pretty good set here, all things considered. Um, pretty cool. Obviously now we're getting these new classics collections for modern systems, so probably a better way to play it. Um, this has the, the HD versions of 2 and 3 that were done by uh, Bluepoint, which are very good versions of these games. They were how I experienced Metal Gear Solid 2 for the first time. And Metal Gear Solid 2... One of my favorite games of all time. I think Metal Gear Solid 2 is far and away the best Metal, Metal Gear Solid. And you look into some of the stuff that they were saying in that game, it is eerily um, predictive of what we are living in right now. <laughs> the, some of the stuff that they said about like the internet and what the internet age would be like uh, and how that would affect different things is so absurd to come out of such a wacky game from Kojima. Uh, I think the man predicts the future. Metal Gear Solid 4, I don't like. I'm sorry. I feel like it just is over the top with its, with, it is the worst parts of, of, I'm a huge Kojima fan. I like, you know, Metal Gear. I like Death Stranding. I'm, what is the, what's up with the lighting here? I don't know what has happened to the lighting here. Um, I do not really like Metal Gear Solid 4. And uh, I just think the cutscenes are just way over the top. It is way too in the weeds. It is just kind of, almost becoming like a Kojima parody. I'm sorry. But that's just how I feel. Hopefully the lighting will fix. It really didn't like that cover. My camera did not like that cover. It was really trying to change lighting. Metal Gear Rising. I think Metal Gear Rising is awesome. I think this is still my favorite game from Platinum. Um, just the combat is so fun. The story and the cutscenes and all the voice acting, everything so over the top. It kind of made a resurgence again like last year, I think, with some of the memes and everything. Really funny stuff. Um, it's one of those rare games. I would say this and like Star Fox 64 where like every single part of this game is like a meme. Like there's so many meme lines in this game. It's great. I think Metal Gear Rising is awesome. I think it's a must play and I, hopefully they can port that over too. But I think that's my favorite Platinum game. Need for Speed Hot Pursuit. I always like to have like some kind of racing game on my platforms, at least back in the day. I haven't got too into racing games in a while now, but I remember this one being fun. Never Dead. This is still sealed. I got this from a closing store for, I think, $3. This is just a weird game. You play as, like, this zombie guy. You can, like, throw your head around and stuff like that. Kind of a funny concept, I guess, but never checked it out. Nino Kuni. Um, this is Level 5. Teamed up with Studio Ghibli to do 
this wonderful RPG. I never finished this one, but what I played I thought was great. I think it's a really, really impressive game. And I just I want to see great level 5 come back. We need to make level 5 great again because they were so great. Professor Layton and all that stuff. And then they start riding the Yokai Watch money train. And then they just fall off a cliff. And um, hopefully, I think they're coming back. And I, you know, they are. They have some games. Hopefully they're great. Fantasy Life, awesome. Nino Kuni, great. Nino Kuni 2, I didn't play that one. Come back, level 5. We need you. Ninja Gaiden Sigma. This one's for all the Sigma males out there. Um, we got here... Kind of an interesting one. No More Heroes, Heroes Paradise. Um, I got this one for cheap. Like a game store kind of just mispriced it. It has a little bit of more value. Uh, I forgot. I think I paid like 12 bucks or something for it. But this is like a port of No More Heroes 1 for PS3 that I believe Grasshopper had nothing to do with. And it is not quite as good as the original game. Um, if you're going to play this game now, I'd recommend the Switch version of it. And I think the Switch version's on other on PS4 maybe or something. Um, because the original No More Heroes is a great game, but <laughs> I don't know if I'd recommend this version. I guess if in some universe you have only a PS3 in the year 2023, the only console you have is PS3 and you want to play No More Heroes 1 and that's it, uh, go for it. But there's probably better ways to play this one. This is not a great port and that's why I'm like kind of wary. Like, I don't know if you have nothing to do with a port of a, a grasshopper game we, with Lollipop Chainsaw, will it be good? Will it be a Heroes Paradise situation? Persona 4 Arena and Persona 4 Arena Ultimax. So these are um, Arc System Works developed Persona 4 fighters, and they are pretty good. So Persona 4 Arena kind of has the problem with the storyline is like you kind of replay the same story over and over again from different characters' perspectives. It gets pretty, it wears thin pretty fast. It gets a little bit boring pretty fast. But um, Ultimax at least fixed that with the idea that, you know, there's one kind of continuous story. Um, it's still not, you know, a great story by any means, but it's at least fun enough. There's, you know, enough of that. They're kind of act as sequels to Persona 4, and, and there's enough interesting stuff going on there um, that it's a good time. And yeah, I mean, it's an arc system works. They're kind of the kings of fighters in, in a lot of senses. Um, and I really like, I really like their pixel art style. They look great here, and I wish we could get that more instead of 3D. I understand why we get 3D, and when you look at stuff like Street Fighter VI, it looks great, but... Persona 5, yes, this game did come to PS3, in case you forgot. Um, remember when they said that this was supposed to come out winter 2014? And this is a PS3 game that came out in 2017. Amazon had this for like $9.00. And I was like, eh, it's kind of, I, I, you know, Persona 5 is one of my all-time favorites, and it's just kind of funny to have the PS3 version, which, from my understanding, is a decent enough version of the game. Um, you know, at this point, I would say just play Royal on whatever platform it's, it is released on. But once again, if you are someone in 2023 who only has PS3, you can't go wrong with Persona 5. Oh, yeah. PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale. This game is fun and it's funny but it, i don't think it means to me sometimes it is a weird almost smash brothers clone but they don't copy smash brothers in the the ways you'd want them to copy it and they have this system that's kind of weird where you have to just get kills a certain way and then it, there's the balance is really poor where some characters you could like just wipe out the whole screen and some characters like you can barely land a kill move on them I, I would love to see them return to this idea of All-Stars Battle Royale. Probably a more competent studio. Um, this was developed by Superbot, who got shut down. And uh, I, I I would like to see them come back with this. I, I, I feel like you could make a pretty cool lo roster in a new version of this for PS5. But yeah, I would say let's get a you know better, <laughs> better maybe a better studio and give this another crack. I feel like it could be fun, but what do I know? All right, we're going to push these back and get another row coming in here. We've still got a decent amount of PS3 games to go, so. Portal 2. Portal 2 is a very, very solid game. Um, and the co-op's a lot of fun, too. So, it's on Switch now as well, which is very cool. Ratchet & Clank Remastered um, Games. The, the Remastered Collection. I was going to say Trilogy, but Remastered Collection is what they call this. 
And this is a pretty good collection. Ratchet and Clank is great. Ratchet and Clank's a lot of fun. And these are some solid games. I like I really liked this era where they were just putting out like, yeah, okay, PS2 games, they're in widescreen now, they're a little bit higher resolution. Here you go, they're available. And I I just I really always like it when you know modern modern systems have access to all of these great games. Hopefully we can get more collections like that in the future. I'm a little bit behind on Ratchet and Clank stuff. Um, I, I've caught back up with like Rift and Rift Apart, but some of these Ratchet and Clank games I've missed. Crack in Time. I hit the camera. It's not an object of a gaming video without me knocking the camera, hitting the camera. So I haven't done it in a while, but there it is. All for one, I know I didn't play. This is like the weird co-op game. They were really experimenting um, back then with Ratchet and Clank. Uh, let's move this a little bit. There we go. Okay. And then into the Nexus. This was like kind of a smaller Ratchet and Clank style adventure released towards the end of the system. Red Dead Redemption. I've I I started this one and I didn't get too far. I know this is revolved revolved Red Dead Revolver. This is regarded as a um classic. And I've, I've heard great things. I just didn't get really far. And once again, the camera does not like that cover. It really wants to up the lighting, and I don't know why. Got some Resident Evil here. Resident Evil 5, this is a fun game in co-op. I've never played it in anything but co-op. And um, I think this game's a lot of fun in co-op, but I can imagine it's not great uh, by yourself. And I think part of it, too, is this is not a great Resident Evil game. It's a fun co-op shooter, but as far as horror and Resident Evil, it's not scary at all. There's no horror. It's so ridiculous where the zombies have guns and they're starting to, you know, they have machine guns and they're shooting at you. So I can understand the hate, but I think it's a fun game. Um, but definitely down there. Probably the only mainline Resident Evil lower than 5 for me is 6, which is one-fourth of a fun game in co-op. Um, so I just, re I just played this one in co-op earlier this year on Switch. Um, but it has the Leon campaign, which is pretty fun in co-op. And then there's this horrible Chris campaign that's like bad Gears of War. And then there's an even worse campaign with like this Troy Baker guy. And then there's an absolutely horrible Ada campaign. Um, not a good game at all. Of course, we got to bring a, a mention that the giraffe here is getting a blowjob from this man. Um, that's what the 6 has looked like forever, and it always will look like that. Resident Evil 6 is a real, real stinker. Speaking of stinkers, never played this one, so I don't have anything to say, but Operation Raccoon City. City uh, just, I don't know. Bad era for Resident Evil. I'm so glad. Resident Evil's like a peak gaming now, um, but back then, oof. Like early 2010s for Resident Evil, like you're getting Resident Evil 6 and Raccoon City and stuff, like... God help you. I'm so glad we're in this 4 remake and 8. This stuff is great. Resistance 2. Resistance 2. I don't have Resistance 1. Resistance 2 and Resistance 3. I always liked this box art. Heard great things about these ones. I'm a huge Insomniac fan. These are, This is their first person shooter series. Haven't played them. I'd like to do the whole trilogy with Resistance 1. At some point, but I have not given it a shot. Resonance of Fate is one that I couldn't get into, um, JRPG. Looks very nice. It was like Sega's attempt at kind of doing their own thing. I didn't like the battle system, like, at all. Like, I get in the game, I'm like, this is cool, this could be cool, and then I get to the battle system, I get to the action, and I'm like, oh no, just, just no for me. This, I'm out on this one. But, could be a cool game. Rocksmith. This is kind of a guitar learning, less of a music rhythm game and more of like a guitar learning tool. And as far as that goes, it's pretty pretty good for what it does. Um, pretty solid. The idea is you it has like it comes with a cord that you can pretty much plug any you know electric guitar into and hook it up to your PS3 through USB. And it's uh, pretty solid. The, the track list is kind of lame. But, you know, it's pretty solid for what it is. Shadows of the Darned. I don't want to get demonetized, so Shadows of the Darned. This is getting a um, re-release soon, and it actually has something to do with Grasshopper. Grasshopper's actually involved. So, maybe, hopefully, better. I don't know, after No More Heroes 3, but hopefully pretty good. 
And um, this is one I just got recently to the collection, and I've never played this game, so I'd like to try it. This is kind of like a who's who of like Japanese game developers. It's um, obviously Suda51, Goichi Suda, and then Shinji Mikami is involved, and um, Akira Yamaoka is doing the soundtrack. Like This really is like a who's who. EA tried their darndest, the shadows of their darndest, to try to bring this game <laughs> into something stupid, but I've heard good things, so... Heard it's not perfect, but I've heard good things. Silent Hill HD Collection. So, you guys might hate me. Silent Hill 2 is one of my favorite games of all time, and the, my first time ever playing that game was on the Silent Hill... Well, my first time playing through it all the way was on the HD Collection. And the HD Collection has some problems. I don't think it's as bad as people say it is, but it definitely you're definitely better off playing the PS2 games. Which is sad because this should be a more definitive version. But those PS2 games are expensive. This is relatively inexpensive for these two games. So if you want to try them out, you know, you could do worse. And you can save some money. But um, Silent Hill 2 and Silent Hill 3, excellent games. Um, just awesome series. I'm, I'm nervous, but I'm also excited for the Silent Hill uh, 2 remake. But uh, it's kind of like a monkey's paw with Bloober developing it. So we will have to see how that goes. Got your Sonic Generations. I like Sonic Generations a lot. I think this game's a blast. It is a great 3D Sonic game of that, what is that, boost style, whatever they call it. I think this game's awesome. One of my favorite Sonic games, right? Like probably right under Mania. Great time. A lot of fun. I'm jealous of 360 people who bought, build up their collection on 360 because they get all these games backwards compatible, frame rate boost, this and that. I'm like, man, why don't you give us a bone over here, Sega or Sega Sony, please? Like, I'm stuck with all these PS3 games and I gotta play it on the PS3 with the UI, the slowest UI of all time, and just I don't know. Sonic 06. I mean, it's bad. Like, what do you want me to say? This is a game that's interestingly bad, and I've played through it. Like, I've played through this game, its stories. This is a game that's fascinating how bad it is, but it's bad. Um, and I think it's just a game to be studied, really. <laughs> really and truly, it's a game worth experiencing just of how interestingly bad it is, because... Whew. Sonic Unleashed. This is another one. This is, like, apparently they have this game... This game is, like, too advanced for the PS3. I tried this one, but the frame rate was, like, two frames per second sometimes. But now they got this thing run, running on Series X, and it's, like, excellent. No pun intended there. Um, with how well it runs. So I'm kind of like, man. So if I ever want to give this one a shot, I'd probably play it on Series X. Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection. So Sonic, you know... Genesis collections are kind of a dime a dozen at this point. This is a pretty good one as far as 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 far as Genesis collections go. Um, it's a pretty good one. You're probably at this point better off just playing a, a Nintendo Switch Online Genesis games if you're on Switch. But once again, if you're that man, only playing PS3, Sonic's Genesis collection, pretty good. Star Ocean, The Last Hope International. So Star Ocean The Last Hope, to my understanding, was 360 exclusive as, at first, and then it got ported over, and this is that port. I'd like to get more into Star Ocean. I think I played this one a little bit, but I didn't get far in it. I'd like to get more into Star Ocean, because I think I have like every game in the series except the PS1 game that came out in the United States. And it always seemed cool to me, but I just never went all the way. Star Wars The Force Unleashed. So this one, I actually, I didn't play through on the PS3. I played through this game on the Wii back in the day. Um, I don't, I'm going to be honest, I don't remember anything about it. Like, I, I played through this game on the Wii, and I was like, this is cool. I don't remember anything about that game. But, you know, shout out. Shout out to one of the greatest of all time, Steins Gate. So, I, I, you know, uh, this is... This is still sealed. I got it on um, PS Plus and kind of played through it there, hearing it was a good visual novel. Um, like, years after it was on PS Plus, I dug out the PS3. Um, this was in 2020. 
And I know I played through that game. I got the platinum, did everything in that game, and I was like, I got to get the physical copy. So I got a sealed physical copy. When people talk about peak fiction, they don't bring up Steins Gate, and they're they're just showing themselves right there that they've never played Steins Gate. Steins Gate is one of the greatest um, stories in all of video games. It is so good, and the whole science adventure series that this is part of. Um, is awesome. I highly recommend it if you're into visual novels. And I feel like if you're not into visual novels, you still probably should just check this game out. Read this one. It is so good. It starts off maybe a little slow, but then once you get through the game, you realize all that setup actually mattered. And um, there's a lot of great payoff to it. Excellent game. One of the all-time best. I'm running out of space here. I'm going to have to push these back a little bit. I am running out of space for PS triple ball in games. Um, Street Fighter Cross Tekken. I just got this one like two weeks ago. I've not checked it out. I've never heard great things about Street Fighter Cross Tekken. and uh, But I still think it's fascinating that they were able to do this and that they did it at all. Got some Tales games. Tales of Graces F. As well as... Tales of Exilia or Zilia? I've heard it pronounced two different ways. I feel like when it first came out, people were saying Zilia, but now I've heard Exilia for a while. Um, this is the t last Tales game I've played extensively. I didn't like the one, Zestiria, and then I didn't play <sighs> Tales of Berseria. And then Tales of, Ar of Arise I have on my backlog, like pretty high up on my backlog. But I like the Tales series. I didn't play ta uh, Exilia 2. But I liked Exelia 1. I thought it was pretty good. I liked this series a lot, but there was a point where they were like cranking out like one of these a year, and it was a little bit excessive. Tales of Symphonia Chronicles also has, you know, HD versions of the GameCube and Wii titles in that series. So, But they were cranking those out like one a year for a while, and then they kind of took a break. And uh, Tekken 6. Tekken 6. I just got this one as well recently in a collection or uh, in a garage sale for cheap. Um, so don't really have much to say. I like, I mean, I like Tekken. I'm not like a huge fighting game fan, but Tekken's pretty solid. I like the character lineup and everything. <sighs> Tiger Woods PGA Tour 12, the Masters. Who doesn't have this one in their collection? I mean, really, if you don't have that one in your PS3 collection, I don't know what you're doing, man. I really don't. This is another one. I got this at GameStop for really cheap. I've not tried it. It didn't get great reviews, but I got this at GameStop for cheap. Time and Eternity. I thought it was at least interesting. What did the back say? There was something ridiculous on the back that I thought was funny. Um, oh, yeah. Go back in time, prevent your own murder, and save your marriage. That is a good draw of me wanting to play that game. But I got this one at a garage, so I think, last year. Time Crisis, um, Raising Storm. I have Time Crisis. Oh, I don't have it on the shelf. I must have it. In the box. I have the gun, um, gun con for a time crisis, I believe five on PS3. So I got this one too. I don't know if this is our time crisis four, cause this includes time crisis four and then dead storm pirates. So cool, uh, like little, uh, light gun thing going on there. And I don't know why my time crisis, I must've just kept the time crisis cause I have the big box with the gun con and everything. I, my time crisis copy must be in there. Tomb Raider. I really like the, uh, reboot Tomb Raider series. I think it's really solid, and I think this is a great, you know, first entry to that series. Um, I remember playing it, like, when it, around around the time. I didn't get it immediately, but I played it, I think, like, early 2014 and was like, wow, this is really good. A lot of people were... It's funny, people were saying, like, this is just ripping off Uncharted, which you could say Uncharted's a Tomb Raider ripoff, but this is more of a survival game than Uncharted is. So, um, yeah, I mean, I like this series a lot. Now they're kind of rebooting Tomb Raider again. Now that uh, Crystal Dynamics has been sold, they're making a new one with, like, Amazon Embracers involved, and I, I don't know. We'll see how it goes, but Twisted Metal, I have not played this one. I, I, um, I've never been huge into Twisted Metal, but, you know, I like to try to have, like, all of the relevant PlayStation exclusive games in my collection, and uh, maybe one day. Uncharted Drake's Fortune, I, this was like the game I got with my PS3. So I, I was a little later to PS3. I think a lot of people were in my boat where it was like 2011, 2012, whether you were on 360 or you were on Wii. And I was on Wii. 
you were probably thinking like, oh, okay, things aren't looking so great over here. With Wii kind of just petering out, game releases were getting few and far between, and it was not getting anything third-party hardly anymore. And then 360, they really shifted focus in like 2010 to connect. Everything's connect, connect, connect. And I think both of those kind of groups of people, and a lot of people I knew that had either of those systems were like, okay, we're going over to PS3. Because PS3 at the time, like 2009 and onwards, was really popping off. And this was the game I got with my PS3, um, and I was, like, blown away. I'm like, holy crap, games can look like this, games can play like this, this is so fun, this is so awesome. And Uncharted 1, a little rough around the edges now, I'd certainly been surpassed by the other games in the series, but to looking at this game, this game being 16 years old, this game came out in 2007, it is still very impressive for what it is, and it is still, you know, a classic. And I think the series gets better as it goes on, like, I think... Um, you know, with 2-2, it's such an important game for PlayStation. I mean, because if you guys remember, PlayStation 3 was $600. It was not doing well. Sony was selling the systems at a loss. No one was buying them. You know, PS3 has new games was like the old meme. And Uncharted 2 came along and was kind of like, okay, we got a slim PS3 now. It's $299 or whatever. It's much cheaper. It's like half the price. And Uncharted 2 is just an absolute, like, you know, it's such a phenomenal game, so impressive. It's like, holy crap, you know, this is the place to go. And then that, I feel like that's when the big, the great PS3 migration came along, and it actually ended up outselling the 360s. So kind of a huge comeback story from being, you know, a complete dud at launch to the next, you know, the second best-selling system in that generation. And then Uncharted 3, why does my case look so nasty here? I don't, I guess it doesn't, I don't know. Uncharted 3. I like this game a lot, too. I think this one gets a bad rap. I think this game's really good, though. Uh, I I like I, I think it's the best of the PS3 trilogy, um, but I think they're all great. But 3, I just... I really like the set pieces. I think that's what it comes down to for Uncharted. You got that awesome um, ship set piece. You got, you know, the airplane set piece, which you like, use in the movie. Really awesome stuff. So, Uncharted, great series. Uncharted 4 and PS4 as well. Super awesome. And I feel like we're going to get some more Uncharted. Probably for PlayStation 5 soon. Next up we got Valkyria Chronicles. Sega published, developed game. This game's another awesome title. This is one of the best RPGs for the system. Um, one of the best RPGs of a pretty bad JRPG era. I really like Valkyria Chronicles 1 a lot. I think... I really like the gameplay. I really like the story and the presentations. It is such a shame this game doesn't have trophies because it was a little too early for that. But this is an all-timer. Um, and then Valkyria Chronicles 4 is back in the same vein as the first one. Also an excellent game. Available on model, modern platforms. They usually go on sale for pretty cheap. I've seen on like Switch. Highly recommended. I love that style of gameplay. I hope we see more Valkyria Chronicles. Well, a disc just fell out of this one. White Knight Chronicles. Um, this is another level 5 one. Maybe I would spoke too positively about level 5 in this era a second ago because this one probably is not the banger <laughs> that we're all thinking it could be. Uh, one thing I find interesting about White Knight Chronicles, or maybe the sequel, I don't remember. It launched on like Christmas Day. I don't know why they did that, but I think that's interesting. But from all accounts, not great. I've never put too much time into White Knight Chronicles, so... Yakuza 3, this was my first Yakuza game. I got into the series with 3. Um, and I immediately was like, oh yeah, this is it. And I got into Yakuza th before Yakuza 0 came out, so I can be one of those obnoxious people who's like, yeah, I, I, I was into Yakuza before 0, even though I didn't get into Yakuza until like 2016, I don't think so. It was barely, I barely made it, but yakuza 3 yakuza 4 i would say this is my least favorite yakuza game yakuza 3 i like the setting the beach setting everything yakuza 4 is like i don't know it's too too many characters it just never really grabbed me very very well um but yakuza 4 i would say is probably my least favorite i've actually shamefully as a big yakuza fan i've never played fully through yakuza 5 which i have a Japanese copy. So back in the day, this was digital only on PS3. Now we have the game on PS4, and they the special edition gave out a PS3 case. But I just you know have this in my PS3 collection. But I've never played through that game fully. At some point, it's on the list. It's a long one supposedly, but you know 
Then I have a Japanese copy of Yakuza Kenzen, which never came out over here. We got Ishin, so a kind of a pseudo remake of Ishin. Maybe we'll get Kenzen as well. But for now, this has never been localized or released in the United States. And then I don't have Yakuza um, Dead Souls. I don't have that game. I, I do have it, a Japanese copy that I got for like games in japan are so cheap i got this one i think for like 500 yen so like four dollars and i thought this outer box was cool and everything so um i don't, I don't have dead souls it's kind of hard to find it's a little bit pricey i'd like to get it it's probably my number one most wanted game on ps3 right now i'd like to get it at some point point. in the last game this should have probably been earlier in the video but i have final fantasy 10 and 10 2 hd remaster i put this i put like the big box stuff at the end of the collection so that's why this showed up at the end it's a little bit taller than other stuff but I like Final Fantasy X a lot. This is a great HD, you know, version of the game. Once again, available on more modern platforms. But if you are only playing on PS3, this is a good one. So, that is it. I've made it through the PS3 collection. If you made it to the end, um, make sure to leave a comment. I always like seeing the comments of people who somehow made 44 minutes into this collection video. But um, let me know your thoughts on PS3. Obviously, there's a lot of room to grow with the PS3 collection. A lot of stuff I don't have, so I'm always here taking recommendations. And um, leave those in the comments below. Subscribe if you are not already subscribed. Leave a like if you enjoyed. It really helps out the channel. Uh, gets the video around a little bit. And follow me on Twitter at Gaming forever long. I'm going to be on that platform still. Other than that, until next time.